Hello, folks, and welcome to today's episode of Trade the Chain. It is January 22nd. I always have to look at that date just to make sure I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, thank you. for Brian's back with us today from the gorgeous island paradise that he's been camping on all week. And we have our <laughs> co-host, uh, CJ and Monty, uh, our astounding, awesome uh, crypto analyst from MarketRebellion.com. Um, and I do want to say uh, just a community note. We just got off our Trade the Chain uh, AMA, and we have over 200 new members this month, 75 or something this week alone. Um, so that's awesome. CJ and Monty got their community. It's growing like wildfire as well. So uh, I, from here, I will leave it to Ryan because I'm not allowed to talk anymore until he gives a disclaimer. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Uh, this is just a reminder that all content provided by Trade the Chain is strictly for informational purposes only. This is absolutely not investment advice. Uh, and should not be construed as such. Unless I wink. <laughs> yes, please don't wink or wink. Um, Trade the Chain is brought to you by Trade the Chain, a 24-7 community, 24-7 uh, global community of traders around the world in 20 time zones now, uh, trading, uh, sharing trading ideas, sharing victories, and interpreting you know, our AI-driven sentiment indicators and actionable alerts to help them beat the market. We also have our own research that publishes daily, Monday through Friday, and uh, more SIG Dev Alerts as well that you can use to trade like a crypto insider. Tradethechain.com for a 14-day trial. The sentiment dashboard here, as you can see, is how the Trade the Chain picks are ultimately selected. Uh, Weston Nelson, is uh, he's been leading that over at uh, Trade the Chain. We also started a new series on digital asset news on Rob's YouTube channel about the trading trinity uh, Weston's going to be picking trade the chain picks, um, and then we're going to be doing technical analysis for trade ideas as well. So definitely check that out if you'd like to learn more about the sentiment analysis and how Weston and uh, the community chooses trades. Now, moving to our next uh, aspect is Market Rebellion Crypto, uh, the you know partner community of Trade the Chain, and what you get in this service is a desktop and mobile app charting platform with a live chat where you can answer questions uh, or ask questions for me and Monty, as well as participate in the community with traders all throughout the world and beginning to advanced levels. We also have uh, trade ideas on a weekly basis, a macro portfolio. We switch the allocations every so often. Uh, we have a member forum, live weekly webinars where you can ask us questions directly and an education curriculum to learn the basics to advanced elements of TA. We're gonna be dropping a new candlesticks course and sequential course at the end of the month. And if you'd like to see all of that, you can try it out for just a dollar. if You go to marketrebellion.com slash crypto. So please do that. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, uh, but before we get to the big boards here, if you haven't subscribed to Trade the Chain already, please hit the like button and subscribe down below. That helps us spread this information to as many people as possible and it helps our communities grow. So thank you, we appreciate that. But going into the big boards here, oh man, a lot to discuss here. <laughs> a lot to discuss. So we've broken down from that descending triangle, but now since we found support at 30K, we've created a bigger, larger, macro descending triangle with a target of about 26K, right in the honey hole aspect of the trend. <laughs> all along. That only took 60 seconds. <laughs> the we'll, best hole is the honey hole. <laughs> we'll get to it on the daily in just a moment. But we can see now on this four hour chart, we have a perfected TD cell 13, which is a pretty bearish indicator uh, by the sequential uh, theory. We're also coming up resistance here on this uh, kind of upward trending channel. Now, how I've positioned myself personally is that, you know, I'm, I'm still holding my crypto for the long term over the next year, but I've brought, I've bought uh, a lot of hedging um, and in the form of puts in these blockchain related companies, um, some of them in this ETF that we'll mention later on, uh, namely Riot's blockchain puts on that to hedge against a potential downturn. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to mention because we have been getting a question about, you know, hedging strategies on crypto because right now this is pretty much a long only market. Uh, but as you can see, we had a nice bullish hammer candle on the red five. 
which flipped us to a bullish trend. Now, could we get sucked up into this bullish trend channel and potentially make a go at this higher low? Sure, we could. I just don't think it's likely based on the current momentum. And so aside from the technicals, I want to talk about the psychology in the markets um, through a screenshot that I will show here. So this is a, uh, a popular YouTuber um, doing TA analysis. And these were some of the comments below this particular individual uh, after he had published essentially the bearish case. But when you look at this first comment, it goes, I call, you know, BS, you are the only guy saying this, uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are uh, going to the moon, the bull run is coming. And then this one is my favorite, what we see here. Your video have a lot of warning. <laughs> you are a very bearish person with negative thoughts. <laughs> well, negative thoughts. This is just being realistic in the TA behind the market and being completely objective. But currently, this is the type of market participant that bought at 40 to 42K. And now when you come at them with a bearish thesis, that is like emotional pain inside that they are feeling. And I still believe that those uh, individuals need to be flushed out of the market cycle because we're just entering that anxiety uh between complacency and anxiety with our, with our uh, rebound today. Next thing I wanna talk about, Google Trend data. We're peaking and we've finally seen a trough now in the Google Trend data. And you know, same thing with Ethereum, same thing with the term buy crypto. We're seeing a drop off in all of these metrics. So when we run up to 40 and to 42K, the sentiment during that period of time is that the institutions are coming. We're never going down again. There's never going to be another 40% correction. And you know we're going straight to the moon. That is the type of mentality that drove this market all the way to new highs. And in order to reachieve that mentality, we have to cool down in the trend. The trend has to kind of blow off for the next two or three weeks. This is another one, the crypto fear and greed index over time. A lot of people sometimes use this as a counter indicator, but I think it's more of an accurate indicator of stating, you know, where we are in the trend currently. And we're very bearish. A lot of those people who bought at 40K are very nervous and close to capitulation in my opinion. So, you know, bringing it full circle and looking at the weekly chart here, a lot of those buyers no. are getting Sorry. very nervous. <laughs> I have never seen a bug that big in my life. That scared the sh Wow, sorry. I thought you got scared of the weekly chart. <laughs> no. I've just never seen a bug like that, man. Tropics. Sorry, guys. I thought he got scared of the chart, too. <laughs> sorry, CJ. You were doing so well there. I'm so sorry. Well, I mean, I'm about done. The, the weekly chart was, was, was the last thing. Um, it was the size of my fist, guys. I've never seen a bug like that in my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> on uh, the King Kong Island out there. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're going to touch these lower levels. You know, we still have two, three, possibly even four weeks of downward to sideways consolidation. Then I think we're going to resume the bullish trend. But we got to get those people in the peanut gallery out of the market first. Um, that's just my personal belief. Yeah, no, I, I think you, you definitely hit all the major points there. Right. And like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if, uh, YouTube comments are necessarily the most reliable metric, but, <laughs> but it's still, I think you're, you're illustrating a great point there. We're like the, this entire year, this bull run was fueled, fueled by institutions stocking up. And then we saw that spike in the Google trends, like you mentioned, and that was, uh, evident with retail investors flooding into the space and kind of artificially pumping up the price. Those are the people that are going to be panicking, the retail traders that FOMO'd into this market. For the institutions, I feel like nothing really changes. They've already uh, increased their stack probably significantly, two times, maybe up to 10 times in this last year alone. And I feel like we talked uh, yesterday about them taking a little bit of profits off the table. So I think the institutions are just going to continue to do what they're doing and hold. And you mentioned market psychology. I mean, every indicator is telling us that we're overbought still at this point, but we're at, we're floating around this round number of 30 K where people seem kind of 
like to be clinging to this little bit of optimism where like 30K is the floor. But in reality, I think this is going to be a more extended kind of correction. And I think you're right, CJ, those people just need to be kind of shaken out of the market. And that will just take time. And I agree to your point. Um, Sorry, guys. Sorry, Monty, to your point, Grayscale just bought 607 million worth of Bitcoin to add to GBTC on Monday. Right, or they announced it on Monday. So yeah, absolutely. Institutions see this as as a discount opportunity. They're uh, they're in the discount bin right now, and they're stocking up. Uh, this is just part of their long term hold thesis. Sorry, CJ. No, I was just gonna say yeah. With those YouTube comments, definitely not the most reliable. <laughs> I was just using them to personify the market. But uh, yeah, I'm mean, gonna uh, bring up Michael Saylor now and his purchase of of many more Bitcoin now. If we're on the institutional topic. I, I don't I, think Michael Saylor is the smart money. I think he is just a raging bull because he loves the technology. The, the micro messiah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I, I think uh, maybe popularity on Twitter is probably more of a priority. Um, but who am I? I once got left a comment that watching me is like watching paint dry. So um, it depends on, on how you value those comments. Uh, but, you know, CJ, one of the things is we broke through 30,000. Uh, it did hit the 29,000 change mark. That's a very, very mental um, uh, floor to have. And so it's going to be it's going to be burned into people's mind. Like, wow, we saw below 30,000. Um, how important is that? Uh, from a retail uh, mentality point of view, as well as we're also, the, you know, the bottom band is is still down there around 22, I think I saw that, where are we at? 19, you know. It'll come it, up, it'll come up. But it, it'll, it'll, come up. it'll come up, but you know, one of the things I wanna say is that when, you know, like yesterday's title was a little ominous sounding, and of course it's to make all the people who like to clamor to that sort of topic come in, but, it's not untrue. There's always that potential. You don't want that to go to the bottom band and that's where the bottom band is at. But as time goes on, CJ's point, it rises. Exactly. And remember everyone uh, that the institutions bought in 18, 19, 20K. So they're still in the green and they're still happy to hold stock up and to buy at a discount. They thought they may not have thought they'd see, they'd see anytime soon. So I, to that point, it would be, it would be, pretty disastrous if it went below 18 19k i think because that that would mean the institutions are getting out and we're in the middle of a much more prolonged and pronounced correction yeah at that point i think stock to flow gets negated if we go to those levels um just in my personal opinion but agreed agreed all right let's take a look at eth i mean we haven't we haven't touched eth since uh we're all looking at its collapse or its presumed collapse but it uh it seems to be correcting a little stronger than Bitcoin right now. Yeah, it's, it is a pretty similar phenomenon in the sense, like it's got that price floor of about a thousand where I feel like it's going to slow down this sort of decline. Similarly with how Bitcoin is kind of stammering at 30 K here. I think ETH is just at this psychological level where people are still perceiving a good value around one K. So we saw it wick down to there and kind of bounce right back. But really, this doesn't change my my uh, medium or long-term outlook on how where ETH is going. Um, I, I'm sure we'll touch on a little bit about the um, Ethereum futures being offered on the CME, but I don't think that will really make a difference either. I think this is just another instance of people kind of clinging to that $1,000 price, uh, but I don't think that's going to really pay off in the long term. It has had a bit of a faster recovery, though, than Bitcoin, CJ. Um, I, I just I wonder what's behind that. Is that a decoupling from Bitcoin? No, I wouldn't say it's a decoupling. I just would say it's uh, a little bit more volatile than Bitcoin. So it's a great friend in a bull market. But obviously, in a bear market, typically we see altcoins bleed out much, much harder uh, in bear markets or just very bearish conditions. Um, so that's kind of what I think is occurring. Um, one question that I want to pose to you guys, um, you know, with Bitcoin, we had this institutional driven uh, bull market where we have institutions buying Bitcoin with a fixed supply as a hedge against their cash reserves, right? Uh, but Ethereum does not have a fixed supply yet. We still, it still could increase um, based on you know what it needs to be optimal to service its decentralized applications going forward, 
but do you guys think institutions will buy Ethereum or any type of altcoin for that matter in the same manner in which they bought Bitcoin? Because I, I don't think there will. I don't think the store of value thesis fits for Ethereum in this case. What do you guys think? I, I don't think so. No, if they were doing it, it would be speculative, I think, not, not necessarily as a store of value. Alex? Yeah, I, I don't see them buying it for uh, treasury at all. I think uh, they will buy Ethereum and other altcoins at some point but it'll be on any of those uh, institutions that have trading desks and, and to Ryan's point, speculative. What, what impact do you guys think uh, the ETH futures getting set to launch on the CME will have on uh, Ethereum's price, spot price? I know Alex feels pretty strongly about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a useless game. Um, you know, a useless being a little harsh, but you know, any sort of cash settlement um, delivery is it just that's not doing anything uh, for, for the ecosystem at all. Um, it, it really needs to have physical delivery in order to uh, participate wholly. Other than that, it's just a, a, a gambler, a binary gambler's bet. All right. Um, we're going to touch on uh, basic attention token very quickly. Um, before we get to our news topic, it caught our, uh, it caught our eye because it was up um, about 34% uh, over the last 24 hours. But also there's a little piece of news that we thought might have uh, accelerated its uh, performance to the upside. So CJ, what can you tell us about basic attention token, ticker BAT, uh, the charts and, and what we're looking at here? Yeah, it's an interesting one because we did have a lot of positive sentiments on the trade the chain dashboard uh, all throughout the previous week. Um, I was not expecting a, an increase of this magnitude, but you can see uh, we created a uh, somewhat of a higher low, which is nice and very bullish for the trend. And then uh, once we have this three that kind of breaks above the previous uh, swing high or the just total high, I guess, that's a really bullish sign to me. I like to get in on those trades uh, when we see a break above resistance. Um, I didn't get in this trade personally. Uh, there's some other fundamental sentiment reasons. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really nice to see tokens when they are strong in the midst of neutral to bearish market conditions overall. So... I, I Go ahead. Oh, I, sorry, I was sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I was going to say, I think part of the reason why it went up, uh, that new, new story you showed just before, uh, you know, having 1 million content publishers on the Brave platform just gives people more opportunities to earn tokens. And another new story I, I came across while we were uh, getting ready to come on, um, I literally right before we started recording, uh, Brave Browser is going to enable, it's fully integrating the decentralized web. Uh, so it's much more in the spirit of crypto, IPFS, which is a, a interplanetary file system. So the way that HTTP works, everything is stored on a centralized server where there's a single point of failure, right? Whereas IPFS, you have all these decentralized nodes, so there's no single point of failure. So maybe perhaps some of the sentiment and the goodwill behind it that drove the price up has to do with it working more in the spirit of you know blockchain and crypto and the industry as a whole and people buying into that notion. Yeah. And, and Brave Browser, I mean, it's been around for a while. A lot of people use it. And there's kind of, when people ask me to evaluate an altcoin, there's a couple things that I look for first, like who's the team behind it? And Brave has a great team behind it. They, their founder was the um, founder of JavaScript. He also co-founded Mozilla and Firefox. Um, also, you want to look for their partnerships, their marketing. They have, like we just talked about, that, a million publishers under their wing. They have a bunch of companies that are partnered with them. And they're going to allow users to accumulate BAT by watching those publishers. And then they even have partners where they're going to create an, a marketplace where you can spend this BAT, uh, where you can kind of redeem these ad tokens you earn uh, to buy products from their various partners. So in, a, in just looking at it like beyond a crypto as a business, they do have a, a pretty good model here. And I think that's part of the reason that's driving them up. They also yeah, have 24 million users. I mean, I don't know of any other crypto projects aside from Bitcoin itself that have 24 million uh, users. I mean, that's remarkable. Yeah, it's kind of like a BitTorrent kind of. Um, but Monty, you've uh -huh. been using Brave Browser. Could you tell a little bit about your experience and, and how you earn tokens by using Brave? Sure. Yeah. So essentially, 
Brave, I, I'm sure a lot of you probably use Google Chrome. You're probably using it right now to watch this video. Brave is very similar to Google Chrome. The format is very similar. It has a built-in ad blocker, but the one difference is their ad blocker because it's built in. That's how they manage the distribution of their basic attention tokens. So depending on what content you watch in a given month, um, you will be doled out a specific amount of bat and you can choose to, um, you can choose to keep that bat for yourself, or you can choose to give it as a tip to your favorite content creators on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, pretty much any social media you can think of. You can use bat as an incentive or kind of a way to interact and support your favorite content creators. So it is an interesting approach to advertising. I really, I really like that. It's kind of, um, choosing where you focus your, your ad, your precious um, ad revenue. People are so, so like they spend so much money trying to make sure you see these ads. Um, it's nice that you kind of can choose. It, it just creates a more tailored ad experience if you're using Brave. And also uh, you can just better support your favorite content creators. Yeah, so if uh, any of you out there watching this and you have basic attention token in your wallet, please donate all of it to us um, when you can. Uh, we'd be more than happy to. After, after hitting that like and subscribe buttons, though, right? You have to yeah. hit those first and then donate it to us. And give us the hot <laughs> attack. Uh, yeah. Moving on to our final segment in today's show, uh, there's the always regurgitating line of an ETF. Uh, Vanek has been has tried multiple times to get a Bitcoin ETF through the regulators here in the United States, but now we have a little spin on it, don't we, Ryan? Yeah, they have a different. They have a bit of a different angle. Uh, this one's an equity ETF, uh, so it invests in companies that are publicly listed uh, here in the U.S. on uh, NYSE or Nasdaq uh, that derive at least. 50% of their revenue from digital asset projects or projects that when developed have the potential to generate at least 50% of their revenues from the digital assets industry. So, I mean, and, and the weighting, so no company can hold more than 8% weighting in the ETF. So that's what, 12 companies max can be inside this uh, or minimum or whatever. You could have at least 12 companies inside this uh, ETF. I mean, it, it feels to me like they've created an ETF where they can put micro strategy into it. Right. Well, it, it, I just don't see. Wait, I, I wait don't see second. the value here. Wait, wait a second, Ryan. Well, I don't see the value exactly either. But why would you put micro micro strategies into an ETF? Isn't micro strategies already like a Bitcoin ETF? Yes, exactly. They derive most of their revenue and all their 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 good sentiment from Bitcoin. However, the, the fund of funds model has been prevalent in the equity and crypto space where you're layering one cost structure on top of another. Maybe people who want to hold the, uh, a micro strategy and then also have a number of other companies like Riot Blockchain that CJ mentioned before, a few miners, uh, PayPal when they are above 50% revenue. I think you know having that diverse basket of assets that are involved in the digital asset industry, I, I could sort of see a value in it, but at the end of the day, I don't know why you wouldn't just go buy these companies yourself and not pay the management fee. I, hey, I don't see the point. I, I agree with you. Well, one, one I, I agree with you, and I wouldn't want the exposure of all the different faceted companies you could put in that basket, right? I wouldn't want the mining exposure mixed in with maybe my Voyager exposure mixed in with yeah. Michael Saylor exposure. exposure. But uh, one of the interesting things is, um, CJ, and I, I've not looked at this, I do not know, but if we took the... Um, MSTR chart and the BTC chart over the last six months, is there a correlation? Oh yeah, extremely high correlation. And that's not just for micro strategy, it's also for, uh, like Ryan said, Riot Blockchain, PayPal, uh, all these companies that are integrating Bitcoin are becoming very, very correlated. Uh, so, so just like a Bitcoin chart. Yeah, um, basically. Like think about it, if you're gonna put a, uh, you know, if you're going to put, let's say you had a, a cryptocurrency ETF or like a, a basket or an index of the top 10 largest crypto assets, you know, that's, that's cool because you get an average on the upside, but it doesn't help you on the downside. There's, they're extremely correlated assets. Um, and if there's a fee involved with buying this ETF, I don't understand why you wouldn't just buy the individual companies. Obviously with the ETF, you can do it all in one shot. But if there's going to be more fees associated with that, I don't know if it's worth it. And, um, you know, I, I just look to these companies as 
uh, opportunities to hedge um, by buying puts on them. So, exactly, it's an opportunistic take on the the whole idea of a thematic ETF that you know Kathy Wood over at Ark Invest has done a great job with over the past few years uh, with her with her ETFs. I, you know, and one of the caveats to this filing is that. If they're not able to find companies with at least 50% of their revenue derived from the digital asset industry, they'll include semiconductor companies, online money transfer companies, and others that are involved in ancillary industries that might not have direct straight line ties to the crypto space. So I'm wondering if you can't find 12 companies that have this qualify that meet these qualifications, I just don't. I don't understand why they're bringing the ETF to the market now. Besides a, a, a money grab and a PR stunt, could it be? Could it be to? First of all, Vanek has been in front of the regulators a handful of times now with the Bitcoin ETF. Do you think this could be a play to see if they'll adopt this and and approve it and say, "Listen, well, we have a precedence, right? You, you're not gonna, you're not going to approve the Bitcoin ETF because of volatility, which is now." horse crap. I mean, that's been blown out of the water in comparison to the equities market. But you'll approve an ETF that has crypto companies or companies in it that derive its its value from crypto. Maybe they're just doing it to set a precedent. So once it gets approved, they say, hey, listen, regulators, you're three quarters of the way there. Let's get a Bitcoin ETF on the floor. What if it's them raising the white flag for the time being on, on launching a Bitcoin ETF? This is the closest we can get. So we'll do this for now. I don't know. I guess we could just sit around and have this discussion all night long. Um, <laughs> that being said, <laughs> space. What's that? I feel like we're not going to get one until 2024, at least. Um, oh, all right. Well, that's that's it. I always love I always love betting uh, on this show, and um, he just called 2024 for Bitcoin ETF approval. So we may start a wager on that. We'll see. Um, but December we'll you... twenty December thirty first, two thousand twenty three. <laughs> That'll be next to fifteen five. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man! All right, <laughs> folks. Thank you for uh, spending your Friday afternoon with us. Uh, we hope you have a great weekend. Um, pray for the markets to go into the green and happy trading. Hang on to those uh, handlebars and watch out for those honey holes. We'll talk to you later. See you on Monday, folks. Bye, everyone.